The movie starts with young Benjamin Gates snooping around an attic when his grandfather, John Gates, catches him. Ben wants to hear the story of the Gates family history, so his grandfather begins telling him a story. In 1832, Charles Carroll, the last surviving signer of the Declaration of Independence, traveled to the White House, desperate to speak with President Jackson before his death. But, since the President wasn't at the White House that night, Carroll had no choice but to share his closely guarded secret with his stable boy, Ben's ancestor, Thomas Gates. Carroll told Gates about a fabulous treasure that had existed throughout history, collected by pharaohs, emperors, warlords, and every time it changed hands it grew larger. One day, the treasure suddenly disappeared before being discovered by a group called the Knights Templar a thousand years later. The Knights believed the treasure to be too great for any one man, so they secretly smuggled it out of Europe and over to America. By the time the treasure had been taken to America, the Revolutionary War was raging. The Knights had formed a secondary group called the Freemasons, and had formulated a number of secret clues and maps to keep the treasure from falling into the hands of the British. As the war ended and time went on, all of the clues were lost except one, the clue belonging to Charles Carroll, saying the secret lies with Charlotte. Sadly, even Carroll himself didn't know the meaning of that clue. Ben's father, Patrick Gates, comes in to take Ben home. He is skeptical about the existence of the treasure saying how the Gates family has tried looking after the treasure for six generations. Ben asks if the Gates family are actually knights. John does an impromptu ritual, and pronounces Ben to be a Templar knight of the Gates family. Many years later, the adult Ben Gates and his team of researchers are traveling across the Arctic Circle, including the financial backer Ian Howe, and Ben's friend Riley Poole. The group stumbles across a figure buried in the ice. They carve it and find the remains of a ship, the Charlotte. Ben leads them inside, but the ship's cargo only holds barrels with gunpowder, except for one barrel that is guarded by the captain's corpse. Curious about the barrel, Ben opens it and uncovers a carved ivory pipe. He discovers an imprint on the pipe's base, coats it with a little of his blood, and rolls the imprint along a paper. The imprint shows a riddle to the next clue. Ben deciphers the riddle step by step, and comes to the conclusion that the next clue is a map, hidden behind the Declaration of Independence. Ian wants to find a way to take a closer look at the document by stealing it, but Ben firmly refuses to do so. Ian finally turns on Ben and Riley, asks Ben for more information since he is the brain of the team. Ian accidentally sets the place on fire and leaves both Ben and Riley to die. Ben and Riley escape through an underground path. The ship blows up, and fortunately Ben and Riley survive. Back in the United States, Ben and Riley are meeting with Dr. Abigail Chase, an expert in historical documents in charge of the Declaration. Riley and Ben attempt to convince Abigail that someone is attempting to steal the Declaration of Independence because of an invisible treasure map behind it. Abigail does not believe them and after understanding that, they see themselves out. Ben decides there is only one option left, he and Riley have to steal the declaration themselves to keep it from falling into the wrong hands. Ben figures out the best way through the security systems would be during an event hosted by the National Archives later that week. Riley manages to patch into the security system so he can guide Ben through the plan. The night of the gala event, Ben manages to infiltrate the gallery by disguising himself in a work uniform with Riley speaking to him over a tiny two-way radio. He quickly switches to a tuxedo and speaks with Dr. Chase, offering her a glass of champagne in order to get her thumbprint, which opens a security door for him. Ben gets the document and waits for the elevator. At the same time, Ian and his group show up and try to steal the document from him. Ben gets into the elevator, removes the declaration from the case and carries it with him. He goes into a souvenir shop and gets a replica of the declaration. Abigail checks the invitation list and finds that Ben is not on it. As Ben makes it outside, he is confronted by Abigail. And just as the security alarms go off, Ben lets Abigail take the fake declaration and runs. Abigail is then abducted by Ian, because his team thinks she has the real declaration. Ben and Riley chase after her, during which Ian manages to steal the fake document and Ben is able to save Abigail as Ian speeds off. Ian soon realizes the declaration is a fake. In Riley's van, Abigail is hysterical until Ben shows her that he has the actual declaration. Back at the National Archives, FBI agents led by Peter Sadowski are investigating the theft. Based on the bullets fired, they believe that there were two sets of agents acting in this theft. Sadowski looks up the security files and sees Ben in the gift shop. While Ian is also trying to solve the clue in his own way, he realizes that it has something to do with Silence Do Good's letters. Ben already knows they need the Silence Do Good letters to decode the map, and to get it, they will have to speak with a man who has the originals, which is Patrick, Ben's father. Patrick is not in any mood to discuss the treasure. He believes that the treasure was merely something invented by Freemasons to keep the British forces occupied during the Revolutionary War. Ben, Abigail, and Riley finally look at the Declaration of Independence. 
Abigail carefully swabs some lemon juice along one corner of the back, and when nothing happens, Patrick reminds them that sulfate inks only become visible when heat is applied. Ben and Abigail use a blow dryer, and find a cipher referring to lines from Silence Do Good's letters. But Patrick explains that he no longer has the letters as they were donated to the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. When they arrive at Philadelphia, Riley pays a schoolchild to go in and collect the letters for the cipher. Spotting Ian, Riley bolts before he can get the last four letters. Riley catches up to Ben and Abigail and shares the new riddle, which points to the Liberty Bell. Ben thinks it has to do with a specific time they need to be at the Liberty Bell. Looking at a picture of the bell on the back of a $100 bill, Ben figures that the time is 2.22. In the meantime, Ian, who'd seen the schoolboy and gotten suspicious, has bribed him to tell Ian what he'd been doing. The schoolboy gives Ian the last four letters, S-T-O-W. Ian googles it, finding the reference to the Liberty Bell. During the specified time, Ben watches the shadow fall across the courtyard and finds a brick inscribed with the Freemason symbol. He carves it out to find an ocular device designed by Benjamin Franklin. He puts it on and looks at the map to see the words Hera at the wall. Just then, they spot Ian and his group approaching. They split up to try and get away, but Ian ends up getting the declaration. Ben decides they should meet up again at the car, but he is captured by federal agents upon his return. Ben explains the story to Sadusky, who is skeptical. Sadusky asks Ben for his help in recovering the declaration for them. As Sadusky examines the ocular device, Ben realizes that there may be more to the map. Ben gets a call on a cell phone from Ian, who wants the ocular device and offers to meet with Ben. The FBI will use this opportunity to arrest Ian and get back the declaration. In New York, Ben is on the deck of a battleship with FBI agents undercover all around him. Ian's henchman uses a device to interfere with Ben's mic while another one of his men talks to Ben and gives him instructions from Ian. Ben walks over to the edge of the ship's deck and jumps into the Hudson River. As he sinks, a figure in a scuba suit gives Ben an oxygen valve and escorts him to safety. Ben meets with Ian's henchman as he comes out of the water, being transported and connected with a phone call from Abigail, who mentions that she and Riley made a deal with Ian to help them get Ben out of FBI's custody, on the condition they made Ian believe he will be the one getting the treasure when they found it. Finally meeting with Ian, he gives Ben back the declaration and the Charlotte pipe since all he needs now is the last clue Ben saw. Ben tells him that this is where the map leads, at the corner of Broadway and Wall Street. Hera at the wall, which Hera being the original Dutch name for Broadway. Ian knows that Ben isn't telling him everything, and he has a contingency plan. He has kidnapped Patrick and is holding him as a hostage. Ben yields and finally tells Ian they need to go to the Trinity Church. Ian agrees and tells Ben to invite Abigail and Riley as he knows that they are nearby. At the church, Ben and Ian view the declaration through all three lenses of the ocular device, and see the words beneath Parkington Lane. They figure out that it refers to a name somewhere inside the church. While exploring the church, they find the name Parkington Lane engraved on a tombstone of a master mason. Ian's men open the tomb and find a long tunnel. When they reach the bottom, Ben lights a huge chandelier and they see a huge set of stairs and an elevator. They try to walk down the stairs but it is very old and breaking down everywhere. After escaping the crisis, they decide to just use the elevator. Upon reaching the bottom, they find an empty room. Riley wonders and asks Ben what to do next. Ben heartbroken, snaps and says they are at a dead end and that the treasure has either been taken or moved somewhere else. Ian steps on the elevator, and threatens to shoot Ben unless he reveals the next clue. Patrick saves his son by pointing out a lantern hanging in the temple, referring to the lantern in Old North Church in Boston. Ian decides to leave them there and goes to Boston, as he can just come back if he needs any more help. As Ian leaves, Abigail and Riley finally realize Ian has been given a fake clue. Ben, examining the room, finds an eye symbol on a wall and believes that there is indeed another way out of there. He presses the raised area, and another door opens into another larger, but still, an empty room. Ben is devastated. He thinks that the treasure is gone and may really have even been moved long before the Gates family learned of it. Ben thinks that he has wasted everything. Patrick, on the other hand, is inspired at the very fact that such a room exists proves that the treasure is indeed real, and their family is right all this time. After they have calmed themselves, Ben explains that the setup doesn't make sense, because the builders would have cut a secondary entry shaft to protect against cave-ins during the construction. Ben sees several Freemason symbols engraved on another wall. One of them is a hollow carving resembling the pipe found at the Charlotte. Ben takes the pipe's base apart from its bowl and inserts the bowl into the hollow, and uses the shaft as a handle. He then rotates the hollow, which opens another door. They enter the room, and see how the room is filled with golden goblets, chests, and other ancient relics. Ben lights a torch in the middle and they see that the room is truly enormous, filled with tens of thousands of artifacts. Finally found the treasure, they rejoice in happiness, and they see the stairs to get out of there. Ben meets up with Agent Sadusky and hands over the Declaration of Independence. 
Noticing Ben has found the treasure, Sadusky recites a quote from the Freemasons about the treasure being too great for any one man, even for a king. Sadusky asks what Ben will do with the treasure, and Ben says he wants to donate it to the world. Sadusky asks what Ben wants in return. Ben says he wants the Gates family to get credit for finding the treasure with Riley Poole's help, and he wants Abigail to be cleared of any wrongdoing. Ben also wants to avoid going to prison, but Sadusky says someone has to go to the prison. Ben says he knows where to get that someone. In Boston, Ian is breaking into Old North Church when the FBI comes in to arrest him. Three months later, Ben and Abigail are dating, and Riley is acting as the group's manager. They've been invited to the grand opening of the treasure exhibits that have been donated to the Cairo Museum. Riley is still upset about their rewards, reminding Ben that he was offered 10% of the treasure's worth. But Ben believed that amount was too high and took only 1%, split evenly with Riley. Riley has used part of his money to buy a sports car while Ben has bought a house that once belonged to Charles Carroll. Leave a like if you enjoy the video, and subscribe for more videos like this.